And this melody I'm playing, where did it come from? I don't know, but it made me happy to play it. For me, that's the most enjoyable part of these videos, playing at the opening. There's nothing to remember, there's no technology to deal with, just play your flute. And isn't that why we do this? To enjoy ourselves? But I was recently brought up short at a workshop we had. We had a flute workshop and we were joined by Peter Dubner. He is an extraordinary keyboard player. He played all day with people in full sessions, breakout sessions, some one-on-ones. His observation, and the thing that most surprised him, was that people were generally concerned when they were playing. Am I doing this right? Is this okay? Now, Peter has a humanistic approach to music. He was not asking them to do anything difficult. Uh, just play along with me, play anything you want. But many of us get very uptight, concerned, nervous, verklempt when we're asked to play in front of other people. Sort of like this cool, happy, grooving guitar player and a deer in the headlights flute player. So this set us on a path of how we can help people be happier when they play, how we can help them enjoy it more when they're playing in front of other people. Um, I looked at song forms and techniques that are particularly easy to play, that don't require a lot of thinking, uh, and this video goes through those techniques one at a time. Hopefully they'll help you be happier when you play. If you have ideas on these techniques, if you have ideas for other techniques, please post them in the comments. So here we go. Try this exercise. Take a breath and let it out. And now, do it with intent, like you're talking to a little baby. Or a lover. Okay? Do that in your flute. Take a breath and breathe it out through your instrument. And now, same idea. Do it with intent. Do it with emotion. Pick somebody that you're making this sound for. One of my prime mentors, David Darling, Grammy winner, lifetime cellist, Paul winner consort, his philosophy of music was centered around one quality sounds. He believed that all music was created by creating a one quality sound and then doing it again and again and again. All of music is one quality sound after another. Give it a try. That's all you have to do. You're, you never have to do any more than that in your playing, and it is beautiful. Why do we always start on the bottom note? Isn't it the hardest note to hit without squeaking? Even experienced players can very easily not quite cover one of the holes and begin with a squeak. So, maybe you start with the middle note. But maybe you actually like this absolutely beautiful interval. Okay, you can do it somewhere else. This is an interval actually we're going to look at in the next flute cast. Next month's flute cast is called The Dominant, and it looks at these absolutely beautiful intervals. But you can do it in a different place. Try the same interval, starting from one note down from the middle note, and we're going to the top note. It gets the same relationship in music, the same interval. There it is. Don't start on the bottom note. Make it easy on yourself. Many people when they play, even when they get some experience, once they play in front of other people, get very timid. And this has a dramatic effect on our music, not only on you as a person, but the sound of the instrument. If I play very 
quietly and timidly, it's, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge maybe to play in a yoga session. We have a, a, a flute cast on playing for yoga sessions. Um, it's challenging to play at a very soft volume because you're more exposed, your breath is more difficult to control. If I'm playing like this, and the flute isn't really designed for that. The flutes from uh, the 40s and the 50s that were played uh, you know, on the Great Plains, they were meant to be played loud. There are some flute makers who design their flutes to be played loud. They're much easier and sound much better Give it some air. Practice that. Give it a nice, uh, a nice, full, steady breath. Take a deep breath and play away. people think when they hear fancy playing that that's what they need to do. Wait a minute. What is the home of this instrument? It's not doing what I just did. If you want to play like that, certainly welcome to. Give it a go, but you don't have to do that. And it's certainly much more challenging and the little beads of sweat start forming not where it's at. Try going back to the home of this instrument and play we call it long tone playing, but basically play less notes. I'm trying to play a song that's a particular melody. Why? Because people need to hear songs they know to appreciate music? No, not with this instrument. This instrument is actually designed not along the lines of Western major tune scales, but along the lines of minor tune scales that take us in a different direction, that make it more challenging to play songs you know, and really encourages you to improvise. Improvisation I believe, is the easy way to go on this instrument. It's also the beautiful way to go. It leaves you room to express yourself without having to think too much. What do I actually think when I'm using that? Intervals. This is, again, foreshadowing the next flute cast on the dominant, where we're using intervals, becoming familiar with these intervals, and how they play with our feelings. What are intervals? A note and a different note. But in particular, we're using larger intervals like this leap from the bottom note to the middle note. I am thinking about the intervals I want to play. I'm not even thinking it as much as feeling it. I've got in my fingers the relationship between two notes and what they feel like and what I want to express. That's playing intervals. Smile. Smile when you play. Give it a try. Even if you have to force yourself to smile, smile. Smile when you play. Smile when you practice. Smile whenever you put the flute to your lips. It will fake it till you make it. It will help you actually be happier. And it'll also, when you're playing for other people, signal the way you feel inside, because you'll begin to feel that way. Smile when you play. The mic is your friend. It is part of your tool to get your music out there. How do you love the mic? Use it. Use it in practice. Best way to do it. Always play into a mic and have it go into headphones. Okay, a mic, into a mixer, into headphones. There are flute casts on this. 
There's a flute cast on microphones. There's a flute cast on mixers. The great setup is mic into mixer into headphones. We've published some simple um, setups that you can do this with, and that puts the sound of your playing in your ears. And you can also add a little flute juice, a little reverb, and really sound fantastic. It will help you so much to fall in love with your own playing, to really hear your own playing, because we don't hear our own sound. Our sound comes from the sound mechanism and goes out. You can't hear it? Put a microphone. Always play with a microphone. Good quality headphones. Fall in love with your own playing. And then you'll feel very comfortable when you're in a situation where you're going to play at the mic. You're not going to be four feet away from the mic. You're going to cozy right up to it, and you're going to use it as part of your sound. Playing with rhythm is one of the easiest things to do, one of the most, the coolest thing to be able to play with other people. Um, very, very easy exercise to learn to do this. Get a very basic rhythm. YouTube is full of lots of rhythm things that you can pull up. But start with something very simple. I'm just going to set up something uh, very, very simple here with my voice, uh, a very, very simple repeated pattern. I'm going to use my looper to do it. Uh, and... I'm going to demonstrate a, a, a great technique for learning to play with rhythm. Everybody wants to be cool and wants to be complicated to start. No, no, no. Again, home of the instrument. Play long tones. Play one note per bar and hold it and gradually make it more complicated as, as you get comfortable with it. But you could, you could just spend 10 minutes playing one note per bar. That's the way I'm going to start and I'm going to Increase the complexity uh, a little bit to demonstrate where you might go with this. So here we go. Dum 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 dum. That's it. Dum. Really simple. Dum 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 dum. on to the dum, next section now. Dum, dum, dum. A flute ain't got no wrong notes. I promise that's true. The only wrongness in a melody that you play is your surprise at the note that comes out that you didn't expect because you heard a different note in your ear. That's where you were headed. That's where your intention was. And now a different note's come out. You can't take it back. It's out there. So, play wrong notes in practice. Play them intentionally, or even the gem that comes up when you didn't intend a wrong note in practice, live with it, work with it. There's an entire flute cast on mistakes. I'm not going to do it here. Go out and watch the flute cast on mistakes. Love your mistakes. Look forward to them. Take the opportunity and make a special kind of music with a new note that you didn't expect. Involving the audience is the oldest trick in the book. If you involve your audience, nobody's going to be paying attention to what you're doing. You could do anything. There's a lot of techniques for doing that. Uh, we have a flute cast on Play the Trees, where you get a group to stand up and you're playing the heights of their, of their heads uh, to make a melody. You can involve the audience by asking them to just tap on their chest and keep going. Don't stop. 
I'm new at this, so I'm going to play for you, but I need your help. Or um, this, kind of, this kind of music traditionally was always played in community. There was no audience. Everybody was part of the music. You can tell that story. Involve people when they're having a good time. When you make them part of the band, they've always wanted to be part of the band. Now they are. Involve the audience. So now you're playing as, as part of a show. There's other people playing. They ask you to come up, and you got to get yourself on stage. And it can be a little nerve-wracking, and don't trip on the wires, and all this sort of stuff, and you're in a new environment. Wait a minute. How about you get yourself onto stage in a different way that surprises everybody, that makes it easy on you? The walk-on. You come from, I don't know, the back of the audience and walk up the center aisle. Maybe you're playing with other people and they can walk up the left and the right aisles. Okay? Or if there's two of you, one on one side of the audience and one, and start playing as you're walking up. That's the walk-on. It makes the whole beginning of getting yourself up and all that nervousness, not nervous at all because you're, all you're doing is strolling up the aisle. Try it. Another way to connect to the audience, tell a story. Tell a story that begins with, I love. I love this song because it's the first song I remember my mother singing to me. I love this flute because, whatever it is, an authentic story that relates to what you're about to, to offer them. Stories work. So now you're in a duet situation. You could plan it out carefully and have a planned melody. And I, we actually had one participant who switched flutes three times during a fairly short performance. Hmm, very, very challenging, nerve-wracking. Is it going to work? Duets can be so easy and so wonderful. Let's not plan it out so much, but have maybe a simple rule. Conversations back and forth don't even need the same key flute. Or... If you've got the same key, uh, same key flutes, high and low. When one person is playing high, the other person's playing low. And then when you, when the more experienced person sees that uh, first person go from high to low, you go and play the high notes. You're always playing counter to them. Uh, there's, a, there's a flute cast on uh, conversations, high-low duets. Give it a try. Backing tracks work beautifully in performance. However, you may have seen very experienced players use complex backing tracks that have multiple song parts and they have to switch modes they're playing and it sounds really good, but it's also challenging and can really make us nervous when we're trying to be relaxed and have a good time. So, find a backing track that you absolutely love and that has a repeating pattern, that has a, something you can easily fit into, even if it goes on for six minutes and you have to turn it down at the end, that's perfectly fine. If you're going to do it, uh, have somebody else work the backing tracks, then it's not your problem. You just wait on stage until the backing track starts and then jam away, okay? If you're going to do it yourself, be just very familiar with the technology. Be very comfortable and have your own technology and your own player and just give the performance venue, the tech engineer, an output of your, sound, uh, of your uh, backing track. That's it. Give it a try. So I believe we love our music. I know we love to play. Um, go out there. Use these techniques if they're useful for you. I hope they can make you happier. And uh, flute on.